So please get up for Bria Baker. Thank you. Yes, yes. We're here to talk about healthy masculinity, and I want to introduce our panelists. We have Carlos, Conrad, and Darnell. And I think I want to start by putting this on you all. Just walk us through your journeys with masculinity. What has that looked like? How has that taken shape in your work? What has been your personal journey, whether unlearning or learning new things? Um, I'm from the South, uh, mm -hmm. right below uh, Alabama, um, <laughs> and uh, it's the part of Florida that's right under Alabama. And uh, I think f uh, growing up, I uh, also grew up on military bases. My dad was in the Air Force, and uh, it was a very narrow lane that was masculinity, um, and it was mostly built on aggression. Being sad, uh, even being joyful, uh, was kind of squashed down. Being empathetic um, was discouraged, or expressing yourself in any way was really kind of discouraged. So after becoming an actor, you have to learn how to be empathetic towards mm. the world, and I started unlearning so many things that I was taught as a little boy. For me, I think much of my learning about masculinity had much to do with how I was policed mm -hmm. and often victimized for failing to adhere to, to the rules. Mm -hmm. um, so you learn, right, because you know, when you're deviating from what everyone else is telling you you ought to be hard, um, and I, I want to be very clear too, right? Like there's a way that black boys and men in particular within a world um, that already sees you as being more sexually potent, mm -hmm. um, as somehow being um, so strong um, as to, to even take bullets <laughs> from police officers. Mm -hmm. and, you know, um, like there's a way that you're taught to live into that. I was this very sensitive, kid so much of my childhood was not people telling me what i should be or uh, no, i'm sorry what i could be or what i mm. or what i might be able to embrace on my own terms it was stop doing this mm. stop being this stop acting like that stop talking about that stop asking that question stop crying yeah. and i think from the time i became that caricature and then arrived at this depression and feeling so lost and feeling such despair i've spent the entirety of my life since then. So half a life building myself into this toxic caricature mm -hmm. and the half since then trying to unlearn that yeah. as quickly as possible and, and, and grappling with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You mentioned patriarchy, you mentioned uh, sexism, these isms. What are these biggest challenges to normalizing a healthier culture? I mean, I have like a gut reaction to that. Like, mm. I, I, so it's hard yeah. to let go of the shit that gives us identity. Mm. Everything about our culture is grounded in the very same thing that we're saying we need to uproot. Yeah. To undo patriarchy is to undo America, U.S. global relations as we know it. So, I mean, we got we to gotta grapple and really be forward thinking. It is a radical act. I am a big proponent of us interrogating our own personal narratives as part of this work. And if that's not part of it, to me, it's not the work. We do use a lot of jargon when we have these conversations. And it's not always the most accessible conversation. It's how do you explain this to a young person who's sort of just like, I'm a guy trying to figure out whether I'm healthy or toxic. Like, yeah. what does this all mean? For little boys, it's important important to hold a space for them to be heard. So much of what we're taught as little boys growing up is we're told what to be instead of yeah. allowing the human being to come through. Yeah. Yeah. When I'm talking to young people, I ask them things like, how do you feel? <laughs> like I ask questions to sort yeah. of get people to start thinking, when is the last time you cried? Mm. And if you didn't, why? Um, because this gets at the heart of a lot of the things that we're talking about, right? Yeah, like yeah, these, yeah. The, the things that we're telling young people not to be. Um, so I'm interested in getting young people to sort of tap into the reservoirs of their personal experiences, yeah, their yeah. feelings, the mm -hmm. things that they are told not to do, and using that as a starting place to engage them in a conversation yeah. of what becoming could look like for yeah, them. Yeah, wow. yeah. But what can we do on a day-to-day -day basis to begin that process of undoing the it's too late syndrome, right? How can we remove that label from ourselves and liberate ourselves to do that work? Taking in another person, taking in yourself. Don't worry so much about where you're trying to get to and be present for the journey. I think so much growth and expansion of our own awareness is possible when we do that. The hard work is like self-reflection. Just to look in the mirror 
and to have to stare your shit in the face. Yeah. Mm. You know, like I talked about my father and it was really easy for me to lift him up as the big monster in the room. Because what that allowed me to do is not face the monsters that were in me. Mm. As long as I could sit here and say, I'm never going to be him because mm. he beat women, because he did X, Y, and Z, and I don't do those things. It made me feel better about myself until I realized, though my sort of actions were scaled differently, they were of the same ilk. Queer men, trans men, whoever the fuck men, like sexism, misogyny, mm -hmm. patriarchy is ours to combat because we are benefiting from it too. Like we're really expert at naming whose feet are on our necks. Mm. We are not expert at naming whose necks our feet are on. Analyzing and really being honest, it is the work because it means you're gonna have to give some shit up. Yeah. You know, it's, and it's so hard because I know that there's so much about the, the life that we live now with social media um, that there's so much that's performative, I think even mm -hmm. To a yeah. further extent than we even want to ever acknowledge. Yeah. Like there is so much more space for all of us when I think we're stepping out of mm -hmm. spaces that we are not meant to inhabit. <laughs> and making sure that someone we yeah. really know who needs to be there enters that room. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'm going to start wrapping. But um, I would be remiss to not, one, thank Playboy again for hosting <laughs> us. Um, <laughs> and to highlight that the space... The space down here and the space upstairs is also a time portal for us to see the work that Playboy has done historically and now um, as a part of, you know, developing better men, giving us space to do that. I want to ask a question to honor that. What should be Playboy's role in defining the future of masculinity? There is an opportunity to engage millions, mm -hmm. asking of us to sort of revert the gaze, to turn these questions on its head, to, to challenge ourselves, to think differently about how we move and enter into the world. And I think Playboy should continue to do that, to yeah. think about breaking open these myths mm -hmm. that we think are facts of masculinity. Mm -hmm. Centering the voices of people who have long been left out of the conversation, yeah. not just their voices, but their representations, and um, so much else. And I, yeah. I think this is a good place for us to start. Yeah. Yeah, I think just championing masculinities that are complex, that's inclusive, that's not prescriptive or restrictive. Yeah. If you each can just share some final words, reflections, what do you not want people to leave without knowing? As men, feminism is our work. Yeah. Ending patriarchy is our work because it enacts violences on girls, women, and people, but it also enacts a violence on the person who benefits from it because it dehumanizes yeah. you. Yeah. Empathy for me is is yeah. where change happens. Yeah. Right. If you take a moment to empathize with uh, somebody who doesn't have the advantages that you have, being able to feel what they feel allows for a space of change yeah. to happen and allows for uh, acceptance and inclusion. I wish I could tell all the kids you are enough. You've been so afraid of all that emotion inside of you and all that stuff that you've labeled fragility is actually where all of your greatness yeah. lives. Thank you, thank you. Wow, wow, wow. Whew. Love to Bria, to Carlos, yes. to Conrad, and to Darnell. <laughs> thank you, thank Give you. Give them thank some you love. Guys. Thank you, thank you.